Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Kling Connection. Today, we're in Houston at the International Space Center. Welcome to the Kling Connection. Today we took a trip to the Space Center here in Houston to check it out. We're here for a little bit of uh, work today and tomorrow for the next few days and we are going to be checking out some of the sites around here. As space exploration has always been something really cool to me and especially as a history guy, you gotta love it. This must have 2,000 people here visiting today. All sorts of kids and people that just almost walk into you like that guy without even looking. The exhibits here are phenomenal. Look, there's like a uh, Space Center Winnebago. Hmm, I wonder what kind of gas mileage it gets. This has got to be one of the coolest suits I have ever seen, ever. Look at this guy. I wonder what he's thinking like, how long do I have to hang around here before I get a lunch break? Maybe even take a pee. Of course, his buddy down here in this glass case, probably thinking the same thing. Like all these people have been staring at me forever. And when do I get to go get a sandwich or something? So when we got in the car to come over here, Shayna said she would moon me, but I didn't think it would be this type of moon. Oh well, we get disappointed once in a while. They have a number of interactive programs and electronic programs that are being done here, and it's great learning experience for the kids. Hey look, I think I can see my house from here. Leaving Earth, heading to Mars. Ooh, look at the space crops. These don't look like the crops that I that I uh, grow with in Homosassa. This is how they grow them in Mars. Green thumbs on the red planet. It's like hydroponics. This is so neat. You can, you can actually buy these types of um, systems here. So you actually grow them, grow vegetables and stuff without soil. How we would have to do it on Mars. It's amazing. The technology. I love it. This is interesting. What would be the weather forecast if we were to live on Mars? <laughs> You might have difficulty with your uh, your attire, deciding what you want to wear in the morning. <laughs> you might have a dust storm one day. You might have a uh, <laughs> you might have a frost accumulation of a couple feet, or possibly humidity that would. Uh, that could cause we if I guess if we would if we would actually live on Mars we would need to create a map at some point so people knew where they were going. So, here's the first map. <laughs> well, we would need to go from one crater to another. We would need to know how to get there. <laughs> I never thought about that. We would need to create a map, right, so that you know how to go from one crater to another. So this is like the main entrance here, and there's different areas. So we're gonna head over here to this um, Starship Gallery. A, oh, this is the theater. I don't think we're gonna go in the theater yet. We're just gonna head over in this direction. Um, let's just see. It's not, it doesn't seem too, too crowded, but it does look like there's some school kids here for like field trips and stuff, but that's okay. Um, 
it's just really fascinating though. I love, I love seeing these kids. So look at this little interactive tool. It actually shows the kids how to manage docking their, their, uh, how to dock the, the maneuver into the, the space station here. Maybe it's not working right, but that's neat though. This seems to be the Apollo test project wing through here. Lots of schematics, copies of the equipment and the pieces of machinery that they used. I wonder if that's an original bench that they used in the mission. Space connections. Huh. Then they, oh, this is kind of cool. This is where they took their hands and they work on like stuff from the moon. And it looks like, oh, these are moon rocks that they probably did some sort of testing on when they when they wanted uh, when they brought the moon rocks back they probably wanted to make sure that it was no infectious disease or weird animals or lesions or whatever would have came back from the moon this is a i guess the picture of spacex's starship the human landing system that uh it was going to carry some of these young kids I saw that they had uh, young kids that volunteered for uh, SpaceX quite some time ago. I haven't heard much about it, but they were young teenagers, uh, 15, 16 years old. So this is kind of an example of, I think, what they're going to be doing. The size of this thing is immense and people are getting into the tour. It looks like it is like the shuttle itself and a landing craft and the people are waiting to get in line. It looks like there's probably some sort of a guided tour. This place is really interesting. If you get a chance to come out here with your kids, they're gonna really appreciate this. It's a good learning experience, especially something as pivotal as space travel. In today's world where everything is so political and so, uh, you know, just, just swearing and bad, where you can actually do something pure and honest and bring your kids out here and learn a little bit about space, something very, very simple. And there's a lot of kids here that are enjoying this. This looks like it's an original display and of the original moon landing. A little lunar buggy that they rode around on. Guys up here doing work. I wonder how much of this stuff is still left up on the moon. It's still floating around up there and what kind of condition it is. And if we ever live on the moon, will they turn that part into like a monument or momentous place that people will go to visit a hundred years from now? So this is the space capsule from Mercury, Mercury 9. This was from 1963, so tiny. Gordon Cooper was in this space flight. I'm just reading from the little display here. It's really tiny, um, really incredible. Uh, he had traveled longer and farther in space than any other American had at that time. So 1963, just a tiny little thing, just traveling in space. This replica, replica of the um, of Apollo space capsule when it came back to Earth, when they um, propelled back to the to the surface after visiting the moon, it's really neat. It's actually it's actually pretty small. But it looks neat having it here. You know that you're able to see it in person. It's neat. The entire museum is well done. I just love seeing the kids getting so excited about science and watching like their eyes light up seeing all the cool things and it's just really exciting. Yep. So here's like the little door way into that capsule that I was just showing you and you can see like the inside. It is actually really small. There's only room for three passengers and it's just cramped. It's like a, it's like airplane seating, you know? Three, three seats right next to each other and that's it. It's like sitting down and you're closed in there and you just hope that you come back down and you land in, in the water. So overall this place is actually pretty cool and um, if you have kids come out and check it out. 
it's kind of a, you know, you hear me joke a lot, but it's kind of a little somber for me. Uh, my uncle, my, my grandfather's brother, the last one, was in the Air Force when a lot of this happened, the original, you know, stuff that happened in the 50s and early 60s. And he used to tell me stories about, uh, you know, driving a bus. And I think he took some of the crews or some of the astronauts when he was in the Air Force. I don't think it was the astronauts, maybe it was some of the crews that worked on some of the shuttles or in mission control. He was a bus driver in the Air Force. So uh, Uncle Joe would have really liked this, but we lost him earlier this year. So uh, that's that's one thing here. But overall, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool place. If you have kids, come down and check it out. Now we're off to the gift shop. See what kind of interesting stuff that we can buy. It's like they got all sorts of NASA stuff. Remember when we were kids, they used to give us astronaut ice cream. I wonder if they got that stuff. Have you ever ate that stuff? That wasn't really good. It was like all chalky and powdery and everything else. Oh my God, there it is. The dreaded astronaut ice cream. Oh my God, have you ever had this stuff? It's like eating styrofoam. You know, you got a home, you're like, yeah, I want some astronaut ice cream when you went on a field trip or something like that. And you got this stuff and you were like, bleh, bleh. and everybody would say, mix it with water, mix it with water. I'm mixing this with water. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have like one of these lollipops from this monkey or a space monkey. That's pretty cool. They got all sorts of t-shirts. Heck, they even have NASA socks. I don't think I'll be wearing those. Let's take a look what else they got. Pens, pennants, magnets. Of course, we always get magnets everywhere we go to kind of put them on the refrigerator at home and tell everybody where we've been. Little kids backpacks. Oh, a bunch of mission control patches. These are kind of cool. Every, every uh, mission patch a copy of the mission patch from the uh, various astronauts that went up. And they've got little models. You can even get a, uh, a jacket, an astronaut jacket, stuffed animals. Hmm. Oh, look at this. How many little kids would like this? A penguin. Little astronaut penguin. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know, that's the, the dog. I wonder if that's the dog like they named after Sputnik. You know, like the dogs went up in space. A lot of interesting, cool stuff here to buy. And these here are the replicas of the space shuttle on the 747, and also uh, the SpaceX rockets are out in this area. It's pretty cool. Very hot day today. Ooh, what is that? They got ice cream. They have ice cream over there. We might have to go get some of that later. Oh, back to the rockets. Here we go. Really need the line to get in it. It's pretty, pretty long. If you know anything about me, I hate lines. And here's the back end of that 747 that they take the shuttle up to, uh, do the testing with or something. It's pretty cool right there. You can see it on the top and the line on it. Yeah, it's pretty long. But it's definitely worth to come out and check this out. So today when we finished up here at the um, Houston Space Center, I loved it. It was such a geek out moment for me because I love science and the science inside is unbelievable. Fascinating. Um, so interesting, awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you're in Houston, come down and check this out. Johnson Control uh, Space Center. It talks about all the history and stuff. And a little bit of trivia. I want you to go back and watch this video. And every time Shana starts a sentence with so, it's a shot game. How about that? All right, so if you like what you saw, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon.
We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too.